Good morning and welcome back to Honeybee Farmstead. I've just finished my morning chores, my milking. So I thought I'd do something different with you guys today just to show you a little bit more of what's going on. And um, I want to get to know you guys a bit better too. So I was hoping I could get some comments on um, the sorts of things that you're doing if you've got a little farmstead or homestead. Um, and if you don't, if it's something that you uh, would like to do and what your dream is if you if you got yourself a little farmstead or something like that so i'm just getting through the fence here i've got to turn it back um, not that we we have um cows that don't really test the fence which is really lovely but it is good to just stay in the habit of doing it because i'm about gonna get more cows this is a little solar unit that we're using and basically, yeah, you just have a grounding rod there and it attaches to the fence. The fence is continuous, so this, these three lines are all joined to the one. Like, they go around a loop at the end and then come back. So, yeah, I thought I would... Here's the goats. Hi, April. You got an excess of milk now by the look of it. So, actually, one of my next videos might be milking April. We've milked her for years. She's a really good, calm, quiet little old girl. So then I give the milk to a really good friend of mine who makes us some incredible goat's milk products like soap. And she's in the process of making me an udder balm for Deirdre's udder because the little calves have made a little bit of a mess of her udder. They're um, being a little bit rough, but apparently that's quite common. I have a, a cow expert that I ring with any anything I'm not 100% across. So that's handy to handy to have. Hey goats. I think Avon's the only one who's pregnant in this group. And we are just feeding them non-stop. But dairy, dairy goats are um, really difficult to keep weight on, just like dairy cows, I suppose. But yeah, so as we go down here, we've got... Little Miss Penny, she's sleeping. Listen to that little voice. Listen to that little voice. You want your mama? Here she goes. Yeah, so I was just curious. I, I kind of, I, I'm getting quite a few people watching now. And yeah, I'm just really curious as to, you know, what you're doing on your little place or... Or your big place where um we're on just under two acres here and when we first moved here it was just literally a vacant piece of old farming land that was really depleted of all its soil nutrient and um, we spent a lot of our time um, spare time between raising children doing the all the things that we can to try and regenerate that that ground and uh, deal with the constant struggle of weeds and all that sort of stuff so I'll just show you here we've planted bananas and you can see here at the base some lawn this cooch stuff is terrible some lawn has started to sort of take over so we're going to dig that out um, I have found that you just don't want any lawn anywhere you were trying to grow trees because it kind of chokes out the root system uh, unfortunately we do deal with that these the rest of this is all just sort of wild grasses and that and you'll notice this this mulch here once upon a time that was a few inches thick um, and now it's sort of broken down and, and created this lovely brown soil you see here it's no wonder lawn wants to take off and and grow everywhere um, this is the cow poo from this morning when we cleaned out the pen bananas are a heavy feeder so they need a lot of food here we have a beautiful big black diamond plum. Yeah, we can go down and collect the eggs, honey. And um, this this thing produces some beautiful plums. So but they're all gone because they're on summer. Pardon? No. Oh, the fruit. Yeah, we've eaten the fruit, haven't we? Over there we have a male fard date palm, and we have the two females. One there. She started out being the most uh, and the one there? prolific, but. She's slowed right down in her growth and this one here who started out the worst has really taken off so it's difficult to judge isn't it and then we've got a Davidson plum I'm pretty sure and that is or Ber 
birdican or birdican plum. I've got a white chatoot mulberry over there. And that little one down there. Yeah, yeah. they're just gum trees. We try to do a little bit of a mix, don't we, Gracie? Yeah. So, and this go over here. We need to stand it up, don't we? Just pick it up, look at all this. This is called Calthrop, and it is a nasty, nasty weed. It oh, takes yeah. seven years to break the life cycle of a Calthrop, oh, and that is not letting the seed, like once it germinates, not letting it flower and produce um, bindies, which it clearly has done here. So, but if you look, the bees actually really love the flower. I don't know why, but um, I suppose that's the only good thing about this horrible plant. Okay, so we go over here. So we're packing up panels and everything at the moment. These panels all used to be everywhere over garden beds like you see here. We do a trellis system. Um, we've got some rock melons growing here. Pumpkins. What else? What's that little round one there? That's um, a hammy melon. And more squash. This little squash we thought was dead, but looks like it's tried to spring back to life. So it's sort of the end of the growing season and the weeds have gotten away and it's getting a bit sort of... Wait, do we still have flowers? Getting a bit worn out. So we're going to go and collect the eggs. Oh, and we haven't visited the pigs yet. So we'll go over here. We'll see if these guys are yeah, going to make heaps of noise. Pigs are always hungry, so they make a lot of noise. I'm trying to think of what pigs I want to do next. So, this, this is Holly. And she is a Wessex Saddleback. So see the line, the white line around? That's her. And Crackles here is her friend. So she was raised by someone um, and she was the only pig for like the longest time. And I actually don't think that's fair to her. Um, it's not, animals don't like to be alone. They're, they're, um, they like to live in their little family groups. So, um, you can see all the little wallow holes they like to make. Every time you move the water, they make wallow holes. Hi, Holly. And we've had crackles in with her for over a year, so we feel like she was either desexed or she's barren, which is unfortunate. Oh, here's some black Brahma chick uh, roosters. I don't normally have this many. There's a reason I have this many. Two of the black ones are going with a good friend of mine to their new home tomorrow, actually. And the big colorful boy there and one of the black boys is gonna stay with me. And I plan on doing a bit of a project. So I really love the fact that Isa Browns and High Lines produce lots of eggs. But I don't like the fact that they don't live very long. Um, naturally, they have a shorter lifespan because they, their bodies obviously work a lot harder um, to produce eggs daily and stuff. And they produce for a longer period than most chickens do. So I thought it might be a good experiment to put the Brahmas that are a meat breed over ices and raise the babies and see how they do as far as eggs are concerned and the size of their body so whether they'd be a good meat bird as well and also whether they'd handle the climate up here where we are it's hot long dry summers and really really cold winters with frost so we have an interesting climate uh, I'm pretty sure it's like zone 8 or something something I haven't really looked into it but from everything I'm sort of seeing, I assume it's about zone eight. We're in Northam at the moment. Um, we've been here on this property for 12 years, 12 years. So it started out just a vacant piece of land. Hey Gracie. Hi. And 
we've put pens and stuff. A lot of these are movable. We like to move our animals around so that they're always eating grass and stuff. We don't spray for weeds and that, obviously because we have bees. But yeah, I think we've done a heap. This has been a really beautiful learning property for us um, because I've always loved animals. Animals have been my big thing, but I haven't always been a gardener. That I had to actually learn, and I'm not going to lie, there have been some really bad failures. Uh, but I think I'm doing okay now. Like, everything seems to be really flourishing. And along the way, I've discovered things like um, putting a pond in your yard is a really, really good idea. Because um, just by accident, really, we discovered that frogs move in, and when frogs move in, none of the bugs and pests and stuff that you see in your garden can live in the garden because obviously the frogs have got to eat right so that was a happy mistake to make and now i really advocate for having a pond even if it's i'm going to show you ours here um really we put it in to make sure our bees could always get water so we've put all these little floating plants and you'll notice there's no dead bees on the top of the water that's because these floating plants float around and they're a safe place for the bee to climb back on and fly off without drowning. We've put some yabbies in here, from young ones and ones with eggs from the weekend when we just went on a yabbying adventure. Um, there'll be more about that soon because we've got a bit of an announcement that's pretty exciting happening. Look at this, isn't that gorgeous? That is called a Kajari melon and one of my favorite YouTubers of all time Jess from Roots and Refuge, she actually advocated for this plant way back and um, so I set about trying to find the seeds and was lucky enough to find the seeds and doesn't it look beautiful growing on a trellis? Look at that. Also I've been harvesting the seeds, you won't actually find this in the shop or anywhere, it's extremely rare here in Australia. Um, I think someone was lucky enough to sneak some seeds in at some point and I was lucky enough to score some of those seeds so um, I've made sure that I've kept oh look see this this sometimes happens and guess who that was mice and rats buggers do you have mice and rats in your yard and how do you deal with them look at this more so all that's going to happen is that these these seeds are going to fall out and they're going to germinate in this garden bed again next year, which I'm okay with. Um, but you guys, you know, you might want to change up your beds. And generally I like to change them around. But yeah, how gorgeous is that? And then when they colour up, they go like this orange here. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, they go like that. And they're like a single serve... So each, each person gets one. It's actually a prolific bearer too. But yeah, I've got heaps of Kajari melon seeds. So if you're interested in growing them at your place, then I would love for you guys to message me and let me know. Show me maybe even a picture of your garden and tell me how you, where you would want to grow your Kajari melons and I will happily send you a packet of seeds. Um, because I'm so grateful for all of your support and tuning in with us. Look at this mess. Now, this mess is going to be moving soon. I moved it from up the front because we needed to have, um, have our house nice and tidy up the front. And so it's come down here. Look at all that. These are all my really, really important plants. So they're under here under the shade. And they're um, on the automatic watering system. What have we got over here? Look at that. The rats really like these plants. Let me see if this one's still good. I think this one's cross-pollinated, so I don't save the seeds from anything that's cross-pollinated. There sure is. I can't get that off. I need it. my snips. I never just pull them off, but this time I have. Don't do don't do what I just did. Always snip them off so you get here. Do you want to hold this baby girl? Sure. Yeah, oh, another one. 
They really love to eat these bloody rats. It's okay, that one's ruined. But yeah, um, I'd love to hear from you guys about your garden and even see pictures. That'd be so wonderful. It will give me inspiration for what I want to do in my next season's spring garden. Now, I'm going to be honest, I am a spring and summer gardener. I'm not a fan of the winter garden, all the brassica and stuff, but only because I'm not good at it. My husband's way better at growing brassica, so yeah, I kind of leave that to him because I'm not great at it. I've always had bad results and bugs get in and whatnot, so I'll leave that to him and then we'll show off his garden. And actually, maybe I'll try again this year just for just for something to do and to hopefully break that horrible curse I have with the garden. But yeah, I love um, garden beds. I've got a seven year runner bean here. A green split. And I have got loads of seeds for that. So if any of you lovely people want seeds for that, you can message me on Facebook at Honeybee Farmstead or Instagram. Again, Honeybee Farmstead. And look, these zucchinis are flowering again. A little bit of powdery mildew happening here. Had a bit of weird weather, so look. I'll come along later and I'll pull all those off to keep the plant nice and healthy. Um, the other thing you can do about powdery mildew is spray it with a diluted milk, milk and water solution. So I might give that a go. Stop any future. There's no actual zucchinis on there. Anyway, some weeds in the garden beds. Oh, I've not been down here. There's a good reason why I haven't been down here maintaining my garden as much as I normally do. Um, and I can't wait to tell you guys, the next video I release is actually going to be the reveal of what's going on and, and why I haven't been doing the gardening as well as I normally do. Uh, you would never normally see weeds like this in my garden. Do you want to take that over to the pigs, honey bun? Or the goats? Put this? Just in the garden bed there, sweet. I'll grab it. Maybe the goats, because the goats are pregnant and having babies. Yeah. Thank you, sweetie. Right, Look at these the bunching onions. Um, they were walking onions. I don't know whether I'm going to get them to do that again. I need them to. That's how they keep going. So they grow and they get their bulb on top and they touch down in the ground and they grow more bulbs there and they keep doing that. That's why it's called walking onions because they walk through your garden bed. What's this here? So this was a hammy melon bed. There's some little hammy melons. Again, the rats have been into that one. Um, and the rats have got away with it, away with it and for so long because I have been busy, as I said. Oh, look okra now these were my last green okra seeds and my last crimson okra seeds so i actually let them get massive um, most of them get massive so that they will dry out and i can save the seed for my next garden because that's how you save money so you don't have to keep buying seeds um, save the seed from the year before this. now i know that in america when you look at the american youtube channels their okra gets massive and i don't know why ours haven't but they've still produced a ton on these small small bushes and they're actually really yummy to eat so i mean apparently they're an acquired taste and I'm, most foods are aren't they but yeah i'm going to save the seeds from those and again if any of you guys want some seeds reach out to me i'm i always love sharing my biggest thing is community and sharing and making those connections with people that have the same hobbies and loves as you do. So, oh, look at this chili. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? I might be digging that out and putting it in a pot. And this one here. Different types of chili. I need to find the labels, they're in here somewhere. And I can tell you, eggplants. I finally got eggplant going. These pegs we used last winter to keep the brassica closed so that they wouldn't bolt. It's a really cool, clever trick that I learned from a good friend of mine. I'm gonna sneak in behind here. 
Ugh, where all the horrible weeds are, look at that. How embarrassing. But we keep it real on this channel. Look at them, beautiful eggplant. An eggplant will stay alive as long as you look after it. In our climate here, it's not a seasonal plant. So of course it won't fruit until spring, but it will stay alive through winter and keep growing. So um, that's why we've put it here so that they can live here and stay here forever. This one here, it just volunteered in this bed. Look at this. It's not even a fruit tree, I don't think. A friend of mine was telling me it's a rose, but there's no thorns on it. So I actually don't know. If you guys know what this is, can you put a little comment below so that I can figure out what it is? And if it's worth keeping, I'll dig it out and put it in a pot and move it somewhere else. That would be great. These are ready to harvest. That one too? Um, they're only the dry ones, sweetheart. Look at this that beautiful dry. flower. This is dry. Flower. Yep, pull that off. You just twist it like that till it comes off. We normally have our snips, don't we, Grace? Mm -hmm. And we snip it off so that we don't wreck the plant. Yep. That's actually the advisable way to do it. But um, we, don't end it we are doing it the lazy way, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Oh well. Never do this. Don't do as we do. Mm -hmm. Do as we say. That's mm -hmm. a terrible way to teach people, <laughs> isn't it? Mm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, take all these inside and save the seeds. Twist them around, twist it around, twist it around. That's it. And then I've always got a pocket full of seeds and random things. Hey, Deidre. Well, hello, darling. What are we doing? We're doing a uh, YouTube. I know what she wants. Look at this. I reckon if we took this over to her, she would totally love it. Do you want to do that? You got some. Hold that. I'll let you through this gap here. There's Let's gap. feed the cow. Because she feeds us. Oh, there we go. I'll push it open. You can get through. Can you? No, you go. You feed her. Hold it. Un yeah, go between so it doesn't get electrocuted. That's it. Hop out the way, sweet pea. Oh yeah. You just grab the end of it and unhook it. Baby girl. Just grab the end of the bush and unhook it. You won't get zapped if you're grabbing the bush, not the not the rope. I didn't grab the rope, I got the bush and Unhook the bush so that she can eat it without pulling on the fence, darling. Just grab the bush with your hand and pull it back this way. It'll unhook, I promise. I won't you zap you. I can't get through here. There you go, it's up, it's off, they flicked it. Oh look at that. Our compost pile has grown rock melons. It's not quite ripe yet, sweet. Ooh, is that right? Surprise tomato. Tomatoes do pop up wherever they want. Yeah. This is a messy part of our yard. Oh. Um, what, lovey? Growing stuff. What is that? Um, that? We'll have to wait and see when it fruits. <clears throat> anyway. Beef okay. video, 23 no. minutes, however. Um, yeah, I just kind of want to get to know you guys a bit better. I really appreciate you guys tuning in, watching our videos with us. I know the, the quality is not great, it's a bit grainy. I'm having an issue with my GoPro and my camera at the moment. So I've been using my phone to do the videos. But again, thank you so much for just supporting me and staying, sticking with it, being loyal. Um, but yeah, I wanna know a bit more about you guys. Comment below what you're doing on your place um, or even head over to my Facebook or Instagram and yeah, let me know what's going on at yours or if it's not going on yet, but you're working towards it or if you've got dreams to have something, um, yeah, let me know. I love getting to know people and I really look forward to it. Thank you so much for joining me today on Honeybee Farmstead. Mama, and we hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day, guys. Mm -hmm.